In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a few of the enhancements we've made to MACE using the signal generation engine. Here we have a small scenario with a few F-16s, an A-10, and an SA-22. In this case, I'm actually going to move the A-10 out of the way because I think he's going to be detected a little early. And one of the first things you might notice is that the SA-22 has multiple beams emanating from it. So now we can do multiple emitters, each with multiple beams on at the same time. In order to see how sophisticated the scans are in uh, the 3D world, I'm going to use a 3D plug-in here and just enable the beams. And over here on the right on the Versig window, you can see a ASA PESA type uh, scan pattern that is being used by the SA-22 to detect uh, aircraft in the area. And in addition to just detecting the aircraft, we can also do multiple targets much more easily now. And in just a second here, the F-16s are going to fall within range. And you can see that the there's two uh, acquisition type beams. One is a long range acquisition and the other is uh, part of a track while scan. And these F-16 flight is moving into the area and now a target track has gone on. So the target tracker is tracking, the missile guidance beam has come on and is guiding the missile towards the targets. And we can see what some of this looks like from the perspective of the SA-22 because the property, the platform properties page now contains additional information that wasn't previously there. For example, you can see the targets that it's looking at. You can see the track confidence they have, that is how good they believe the, uh, the information is on where the target is. The track priority, which is its determination of which target is the most important. And we can see that it's engaging, in this case, with an SA-22 missile. It has the time in WES is 1412, starting to leave the WES area. The engagement status says waiting for salvo interval, meaning that it's already fired and it will fire again later. Since the F-16s have primarily moved out of the target area and the A-10 has moved in, we can see that the A-10 has actually started jamming and if we look at from the SA-22's perspective, the A-10, we'll see that his track confidence isn't as high as you would expect given that he has a target tracking radar on him, but that's because he's jammed. So the properties page, uh, the platform properties dialog now gives you a lot more information as to what's happening in the mission as it, as it unfolds and uh, will help you understand what's going on and why you're uh, um, being attacked or not being attacked. In addition to the beam activity and improved target tracking capabilities, we've also improved the physics of the simulation. Here we'll focus on the A-10 as it goes, starts to go behind a hill, and I'll bring up some RWR gear. And we can see that the SA-22 is targeting the A-10, and that we hear it clearly on the RWR. But as the A-10 goes behind a hill, the radar starts to lose track of the aircraft, and in fact completely loses it. But the RWR will still pick up some of the radar signal now that he's behind the hill due to diffraction. So we simulate the diffraction in accordance with the laws of physics based on frequency and how high the hill is and uh, how low the target is behind the hill. We can also take a look at the actual definitions of what's going on for the particular emitters. So we can go to weapons and on each of these weapons we can now right click and get, let's come up over here, we can get the editing, the SGE editing window. So here we can take a look at the emitter and the uh, some of the basics of what the emitter is doing including showing its targets and you can see here it is in real time selected uh, target 2 and 
uh, which is the A10. And we can also look at the definition of the particular beam that is tracking this target. Uh, this is the track while scan beam, and this is the target tracking beam. Taking a look at the track while scan beam, we can see the pulse data, and we can make as many of these pulses as we want. We have pulse coherency, etc. We can also look at the beam shape, and in fact, you can actually just draw your own beam shape if you like. So it's that easy to edit. And the scan pattern. You can also edit the scan pattern at any time. So for example, if I change this to a, let's make it a sector scan. You can see it's now sector scanning in the environment. And we can make this beam a little taller. and you see in 3D what's actually going on in the environment with the beam. So of course you can save your edits and when you save them they'll be saved to a special folder in MACE called the users folder and this folder will not be overwritten by MACE on future upgrades.